In this video, I want to talk to you about the calc function in CSS. The calc function allows you to actually perform a unit calculation and return a result. The beauty of this is that you can mix and match unit types. This allows you a lot of ways to solve standard problems that you'll run into when you're developing web pages. This is the page that we're going to be working on. And right now, if I resize my page down, you can see that at a certain point, anything less than about 460 or so, you can see that these two columns no longer sit by side by side. So they'll drop down underneath. And obviously I have a lot of space over here to the right. So it certainly is not optimal. And even when it starts to get fairly narrow, it starts to get a little bit unreadable. So at the large size, it looks okay. Small size, not so much. Let me show you the HTML that I have so far. The HTML is as follows. I'm linking to an external style sheet. I have a header with an image and an H1. And then I have a section that contains an article with an H1 and a couple of paragraphs and an aside that contains an H3 and a paragraph. And these two items, the article and the aside are wrapped inside of a section tag. This is the CSS that I have so far. So I'm pointing out to some Google fonts. I have some rules on my body to set the background color and the base font family. I have some rules on main, which are setting the background of main to a 80% white. I have some border radius and shadow rules and padding and margin. And I've also set the width of main to 90%. On my header, I'm setting a background color to this green shade, and I have a border radius, some margin padding. I'm positioning this relative, and that's because the child element, the header image, is using absolute position. So that's how I'm getting my little logo to stay on the right-hand side of the header area right here. And I have some rules for H1s through H3s, standard rules on my section. The article tag is floating left. It has a width of 62.5% currently. And the aside is floating left and it has a width of 31 and a quarter percent. And you can see that my aside has a margin setting as well. The margin I'm using is in M's while the width is in percent. And then I have some rules for the nested H3 and paragraph that are children of the aside. I do have an empty media query, which currently doesn't contain anything. Let me just show you what calc can actually do. What we're going to do is we're going to alter some of our margin settings right here, just so I can show you. So on my article tag, I don't have margin or padding. Let's actually just temporarily turn a border on. And as you know, if you create a border and or padding, it's going to go to the outside. So there's my border on my article. Currently there's some spacing between the article and the aside because of the margin that I've placed on the aside. If I wanted to create more spacing, I would of course need to set either margin or padding and we'll just use some margin right now. Right now. So I'm going to set the margin right and let's just set the margin right to 20 pixels. If we save and we refresh, you can see that it now pushes this over. Now at this fairly wide layout, everything fits, but as my layout starts to get slimmer, you can see that the aside gets dropped down. And that's because based on the width of the browser, and if we added up the percentage and the border of one pixel and the margin right, these things start to get a little convoluted, like how much percent is 21 pixels. That's really hard for us to actually calculate and figure out. But obviously at some point, the math 62 and a half plus the two pixels on the right and the left plus the 20 pixels, that's going to exceed the amount that we have in the section that is holding both the article and the aside because the aside also has a percent value, a border, on the left anyways, and then it does have some margin settings too. So this kind of stuff can get a little bit tricky, but with the calc function, this actually is much easier for us to do. So I'm just gonna show you something that probably isn't gonna be really useful right away, but I do wanna demonstrate how calc works. So for the margin right, we're gonna get rid of our 20 pixels and we'll write calc. I'm gonna open parentheses and inside the parentheses, I'm gonna perform a mathematical equation. We're gonna do 40 pixels minus 10 pixels, which obviously is gonna give us 30 pixels. 
calculation function can take on subtraction, addition, multiplication, or division. If we save now, what we should have is a margin right of 30 pixels. So when I come to the browser and I refresh, we should have more space on between the article and the aside. And you can see that the aside actually dropped down. And if I make my page wide enough, it does come back and now it can accommodate the 30 pixels. But as my page gets more narrow, I cannot accommodate that. So we could do that on the border as well. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna type calc. I'll open my parentheses and let's just put 10 pixels plus two pixels, which should give me a border of 12 pixels. If we go ahead and save and refresh in the browser, you can now see that the border has gotten much thicker. And if we were to go ahead and look, we should have a border of 12 pixels because that's what we put in here with our math. So you can see how the calculation allows you to work, but what use of this? This isn't really that useful in these examples. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to do something a little bit more useful. I am going to set these back to what they were. So we'll set the border back to the solid one pixels and the margin right to 20 pixels for right now. And let's go ahead and let's perform some calculation that might be more of use to you. So currently the width is 62.5% plus these other things that are affecting the article, border, margin, whatever. And the same thing's kind of going along with the aside as well. Let's make this a little easier to understand. We're gonna want to divide our page up so it's more of a two third to one third type layout. So I want the article to clearly just take up one third of the available space. That should be something like 66.666667%. For our purposes here, let's just say that we want the width of the article one to be 65% and we're going to have the width of the aside take up the remaining space available, which would allow it to be 35%. Now, if I make these changes right now, there's no way that these are going to fit side by side. And that's because we have border, we have margin, we have padding, we have other things that are affecting having these sit side by side. And it would be pretty much impossible for you to figure out what these numbers need to be since we're using pixels here and M's over here and stuff like that. So with calculation, we can easily control this. So instead of having my width be 65%, what we're gonna do is we're going to use the calc function. And in the parentheses, I'm gonna pass on that the entire width is 100%. So I'm gonna say 100% minus, and then I'm gonna subtract 35% that is the width of the aside. And I also need to subtract the spacing that is on the right and the left. So if we look at our margin for the aside, we have one and a half M's for the right and one M for the left. So let's go ahead and subtract out one and a half M's. And then finally, I'm going to subtract two pixels for the border left. So we'll also minus out two pixels. And this, when I subtract from 100%, 35% plus the 1.5 Ms plus the two pixels, that should give me a width that will allow these to fit side by side. And we don't need this border red anymore. I'm gonna get rid of this as well. Okay, so this has set the overall size for our article. As you can see in the browser, these aren't side by side. Now they aren't side by side and that's because I neglected to add in the margin right or subtract the margin right. If I save and we refresh, we should see that now these are side by side. And if I resize my page, you can see that they're gonna stay side by side no matter what. Now obviously at some point they get too narrow so I'm gonna have to put in some rules under my media query, but we never have the problem where this side is going to drop down. And that's because the calculation is being performed based on all of these settings. We're subtracting the 35%, the one and a half M margin, the two pixels for the border and the 20 pixels for the margin, right? So that will always give us a value that is going to allow 
whatever the sum of these items is to be subtracted from 100% and that will be the width of the article. I really love this feature because it's just so flexible and it's a way that you just don't have to put in a ton of media queries. It calculates this for you and you have no problems. So let me just open up my developer tools real quickly. And if we go into the article, you can see that the width is this calculation. If I switch to my computed size and we select article, it's gonna show me what the current width of the article is. So right now it's 507. As I resize my page though, you can see that that number is gonna dynamically update based on whatever size it actually needs to be. So I find this to be extremely helpful. And to finish this page off, let's go ahead and add some rules into the media query. The media query is going to be more straightforward, so I'm going to come into my media area and I'm going to make a rule for article. I'll set the width to be 100% and I'm going to change my float to none. And then for the aside, I'm going to set the width to 100% and also change the float to none and I'm going to set my margin to zero. We probably are gonna to need to zero out the margin on the article because we don't need that anymore. So let's just set the margin right to zero here as well. And finally, on my aside, I'm going to get rid of the border left. So I'm just gonna tell the border left to also be equal to none or just to eliminate that. So if I save now and I refresh, here's my page at the large size and obviously it's gonna just adjust the widths of each of these items. And then at a certain point when my media query kicks in, it's gonna to go to the one column layout and it'll look like this. So with the help of calculation, we are able to really easily and quickly create a dynamic layout where we can subtract out any sort of margin padding border and we can mix the units of measurement, which I find to be the most helpful thing with calculation, because now you're not stuck trying to figure out what's the percentage of something that's dynamic when it's one and a half M's or two pixels, like how does that translate into percentage? That's almost impossible to figure out. One thing that I do want to point out when you're performing calculation, especially when you're doing subtraction, make sure that you don't have the subtraction be right next to the number. If you have your page set up like this, this is going to identify this as a negative number and the calculation isn't gonna work. So when you're doing subtraction especially, you need to have spacing between the values and the operators that you're using.